Well, good morning. Uh, that's why we're here. That's what we have to prevent. And uh, this is why you're all here together to fix this problem. Medical errors, third leading cause of death. You know, more people are killed in Chicago with medical errors than with gunshots. I mean, it's scary. So uh, I'm Mike Ramsey. I'm head of anesthesia at Baylor in Dallas, Texas. And uh, so I'm heavily involved in uh, patient care. And so this really brings it home to me when we see these stories of uh, patients and patients' families um, of the disasters that we've allowed to happen. And we've got to stop it. And with your help, we're going to stop it. And uh, I think I just want to spend a few minutes, I know he's reticent that I would do this, but talking about Joe Kiani, because what a man. <laughs> he's passionate about his family. He's passionate about his work. He's passionate about the patient safety movement. And that's why you have the passion that you've got. That's why we're all here today, because of Joe. And a little bit about his history. He was born in Shiraz in Iran uh, and came over to the United States age nine. And I'm sure glad he's not at the airport today. But um, <laughs> I've actually had the good fortune to go to Tehran last year and talk about patient safety. And uh, it was amazing, the response. So hopefully, the world is changing and that we can all get together. And uh, maybe patient safety is the way to do it. So Joe graduated from high school age 15, masters in engineering by 22, and he founded Massimo Company at age 23. And what he did was he, he looked at healthcare devices, and uh, I know many of you in medicine, you know what a pulse oximeter is, but for those of you who don't, it's just basically you shine a light into the tissue on the finger, and the reflection gives you a number of, of the, what the percent of hemoglobin is oxygenated, and how well oxygenated it is. And the problem with the devices we had at that time was that uh, they were inaccurate. And so Joe used his expertise and was able to create a device that was accurate when there was poor perfusion and when there was movement. And I was really interested to read how he did this because I thought he probably had a space age laboratory where he'd be able to sort of look at fingers moving, etc. cetera. And uh, what he actually had was volunteers that put their hand in a hand shaker. And uh, he had these devices taped onto the uh, uh, fingers and had the hand shaking. So I thought this would be a, a good gift to give President Clinton when he comes here. Um, but anyway, he developed a much better motor car, and that just changed medicine. And uh, it's just gone from heights from that point on to now we have non-invasive monitoring, can measure your hemoglobin level. It can measure your carboxyhemoglobin, so for the firefighters can go into a fire and realize that that victim they've just pulled out, their carboxyhemoglobin's at a dangerous level. They can treat them. He's changed people's lives, he's changed our lives, and we are going to have continuous monitoring on every patient, not only in the hospital, but at home. When you go in and have your knee surgery and you go home the same day, we'll monitor you at home. Because these devices that you're all wearing now on your wrist, they're going to be accurate and precise enough that we'll be able to monitor the vital signs of patients. So, as Leonor Alexander said, we won't find people dead in bed. We'll find, we'll have early warning that they're getting into trouble so that we can do something and that we can protect our patients. And this is really because of the work of Joe Kiani. Joe made a comment yesterday that said, I couldn't save a life to help myself. Joe has saved countless lives already. He saved many people from harm with his devices. He saved babies' eyesights by having the accurate pulse oximeter that can tell you how much oxygen that baby's getting so we don't poison them with too much oxygen. This is because of Joe Kiani. His vision was to prevent medical errors 
and he formed the patient safety movement with the passion that's now spread. You all have it. That's why you're here. Eight o'clock in the morning, the room is full, and I can sense the vibrance of you all. We've got to get this fixed. And why is this movement going to be successful? And it's because he's got everybody in this room. We've got patient families. We've got healthcare professionals. We've got med tech industry. We've got politicians. We've got everybody involved in the care of patients. That's the only way we're going to find a solution. And we are finding the solution. Together, 3,562 hospitals made the commitment. Multiple major companies have made the commitment. We've now saved, audited, 69,519 lives. I'd like to say that the patient safety movement's gone viral, but perhaps that's not a word I should use. It's, it's gone international. It's around the world, and uh, I think that's because of everybody in this room, but particularly because of Joe and, and Joe's passion with this movement. I want to step back just for a minute and give an example of where it's helped me. I'm a clinician, and I'm blessed to be a clinician, and yet two days ago I took care of a double lung transplant. And for those of you who have probably most of you have never seen that, but, and I'm blessed to be a clinician, and yet two days ago I took care of a double lung transplant. And for those of you who have probably most of you have never seen that, But, you know, we put up the lungs, and the lungs inflate just like the sort of wings of a manta ray. It's really fascinating to see. I mean, I'm blessed to be able to see it uh, and be part of it. But every one of those patients is immunosuppressed. So if anybody touches that patient, anybody touches that central line and haven't washed their hands, they're at risk for an infection. That could kill them. All that work would be for naught. And so, because of this movement at our hospital in Baylor, everybody's focused on hand washing. Everybody. You could not go into a patient's room and not wash your hands before going into the room. Somebody would stop you. That's where we've got to. And that's where every hospital's got to get to, where we're all in this together to protect our patients. So, that was just a few words about somebody who I think has really changed the world. And so, Joe, thank you for your vision. Thank you for your total commitment. You're making a huge difference in this country and around the world. So, Joe, from all of us, thank you so much. Thank you for what you do, Joe. Thank you. That's so great. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Wow. Thank you. Good thing I don't blush. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Well. Thank you. Thank you so much. It's a uh, really a good thing I don't blush. Uh, it's like uh, the Pope introducing the choir boy. I didn't say all kinds of good things about him. Uh, I uh, remember visiting the CMS the first time with Dr. Ramsey, and. These are very senior people, and I won't mention names, looking for autographs from Dr. Ramsey. So thank you so much for all that you've done, from the Ramsey scale to the way you humbly uh, put patients always first. Uh, never, it's never about you. So thank you. It's, it's an honor to work with you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for all coming back. I'm glad the prunes haven't taken effect yet. <laughs> I'm sure you have many. Where is, where is Jim? He started this. Um, the next video that you're going to see, it's very gripping, and it's very sad. And you know, we share these stories with you because they're examples of 200,000 plus people dying in our country three million more people dying around the world. Uh, I think it would be maybe manipulative 
uh, you might think, if we were showing these and it was just anecdotes, a few things happening once in a while, uh, in some uh, infamous hospital. But unfortunately, these are just examples of what happens every day. Uh, so the families go through a lot to help create them. They only do it because they believe it's going to help save somebody else's life. And we can't be in the business of healthcare and not do everything we can to stop this. We don't want any more stories. So, ladies and gentlemen, let's please watch this next video before the Pediatric Adverse Drug Panel takes the stage. Thank you. Thank you.